Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're screening for peg ratio with Kevin Matris, head of our Research Wizard Division here at Zach's Master Stock Screener. It's been a while since we talked about this topic, peg ratio. Yeah. Now, I know what a peg is. Right. Or are you referring to, like, uh, a woman's name here? Peg. Yeah, I'm humanizing everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, in this case, uh, PEG is a ratio, and it is used for determining a company's under or overvaluation. Okay. And I figured the best place to start, uh, usually it is the best place to start, is by looking at a definition. So at check it out. At the beginning, right. PEG ratio. PEG ratio is simply the P-E ratio divided by the growth rate. So a value of one or less is considered good or at par, undervalued, that's what some people call it, mm -hmm. while a value of greater than one in general is not as good or it's overvalued. Okay. So if you were to take a look at a couple of examples, check this out. Many believe the peg ratio tells a more complete story than just the PE because of this. If you were to look at a company with a PE ratio of 25 and a growth rate of 20, that would have a PEG ratio of 1.25. And you can see the calculation. It's the PE ratio divided by the growth rate. That's how you get your PEG. Uh, a company with a PE ratio of, let's say, 40, though, on the other hand, and a growth rate of 50 would actually have a lower PEG ratio of 0 0.8. So that item <clears throat> seems to go beyond just the P.E. ratio. It's true because when you look at it, traditionally an investor would look at the company with the lower P.E. ratio and consider that to be a bargain or consider that to be undervalued. But if you look at it closer, you can see that that company doesn't have the growth rate to justify its P.E. So if you were to go back to the slide, mm -hmm. you can see that the P.E. ratio is trading above its growth rate. But if you were to look at the other one, the one at the bottom with the P.E. ratio of 40, that one is really the better bargain because it's trading at a discount to its growth rate. And a lot of people think that means it has more potential to move higher. All right. So, in other words, the lower the peg ratio, the better the value because the investor would be paying less for each unit of growth that he's getting. Give us those screen parameters. All right. Screen starts off by looking at companies with a Zach's rank of a 1. So we only are allow, uh, allowing companies with a strong buy to get through. Then we're looking at the average broker rating. It has to be less than or equals to 2.5. The brokers have to be on board. And we're only looking at companies in the better part of a strong buy or buy. We also want the growth rate to be strong since that's part of this calculation. We want strong performers and greater than or equals to 20 is a great signifier of that. Then when we get to the peg ratio, we're just using a classic peg ratio definition. And again, we want the peg to be less than one. So we're looking at companies that are trading under their unit of growth. Then we're just applying all of this stuff to the current price. We want the current price to be greater than or equals to $5. And we want the volume to be big enough to be tradable, greater than or equals to 100,000 shares traded on a daily basis. All right. And what, about 110 stocks came through the screen? Uh, no. There, I think there was about 21 <laughs> stocks. Here's five of them, all from a very diverse set of industries. You've got Fairchild, Semiconductor, Ingram Micro, NBTY, Tyco Electronics, and Whirlpool. What's interesting is they all have good growth rates, they all have a good Zach's rank, and all of these companies have PE ratios trading below their growth rate, and I think that that makes them very attractive. Do you own any of these? I do have uh, Tyco Electronics. All right. Learn all about this particular screen in text form on our website, zax.com, by going to our homepage and scrolling down the page until you get to Kevin's picture and clicking on the headline right next to it. And if you want to learn more about the Research Wizard, which is the tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of these screens, go to zax.com forward slash research wizard. You get the whole lowdown. With Kevin Matris and the screen of the week, peg ratios, I'm Terry Ruffalo. <laughs>